Hi, welcome to Voices from the Loft. I am Pastor Joel, and this is the Loft Wesleyan Church in Hillsboro, New Jersey. Greg Dabb is the pastor. What we're looking at here is a beautiful window in the chapel up here at Fellowship Deaconry Ministries in Basking Ridge, where I work. This window is portraying the episode of Jesus with the woman at the well. And uh, the picture, we can't zoom in while we're recording. It's just a beautiful window. But this is the woman at the well drawing water for Jesus. This episode is in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. And there's this uh, long unfolding conversation between them. But at, uh, at the end of that conversation, Jesus says to this woman, uh, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give them shall never thirst again. What an amazing thing to say, will never thirst again. But if we look at uh, what the situation is, it, it begins to make some sense. I'm which here. Hello, it's me, Pastor Joel. And there's the window behind me. I'm in the chapel at uh, Fellowship Deaconry Ministries, just for what it's worth. Beautiful place. Uh, but what I see in this episode of The Woman at the Well, it, does, it has to do with hope and longing. The woman at the well uh, had had a troubled life. Uh, Jesus through a word of knowledge, spoke to her knowingly, uh, you know, go get your husband to come and speak with us. She says, I don't have a husband. Jesus says, that's right, you don't. And you've had five husbands, and the man you're living with is not your husband. And that kicks off this conversation about him being a prophet and so on. Um, and that goes into a conversation about worshiping God and up on the mountain or in Jerusalem, and uh, Jesus asked the woman to draw a drink for him. And then he gets to this analogy that if you drink of the water that I have for you, you'll never thirst. And the, uh, the Gospel of John, this episode is in the Gospel of John chapter 4, does not explicitly tell us a lot about this woman other than that she's been married five times and, and so on. But I see in there a longing, a desire. Perhaps it's nothing weird or unusual. Maybe it's just been a string of bad circumstances. Who knows if her husbands keep dying or if they divorce her. Uh, we're not given any of those details. But it would seem that she herself is longing, thirsting, if you will, for some kind of fulfilling or even just a refreshing in her emotions. Somebody to love her, somebody to love. We don't know and we can't judge. But what does remain true is that if whatever it is we thirst for, whatever it is, no matter how good it might sound, no matter how normal or typical it might sound, whatever we search for or thirst for to quench or to satisfy us, will have us thirsting again. Uh, there's nothing in this world this, that can fill us so completely as to never thirst again. And so Jesus' comment is really astonishing when he says if we drink of Jesus, we will never thirst again. And what that speaks of is that this sense of fulfillment, the sense of belonging, the sense of purpose that begins to fill our lives when we drink of the gospel of Christ allows us to experience a kind of satisfaction and rest and peace that simply do not exist with any other drink, whether it's uh, the Giants on Sunday or the Mets tomorrow night or the opera or the theater or the church group, anything that we search for and thirst for will leave us thirsty again. 
I was reading through the book of Ruth a while back. If you've never read Ruth, do so in one sitting. It's only four pages or so long. Beautiful story about Ruth the Moabitess who comes to Israel and she's introduced uh, to this man Boaz who takes her as a wife and lo and behold they are ancestors of King David and therefore genealogical ancestors of Jesus Christ. And But in reading through the book of Ruth I came across this word hope and the Hebrew word that I found is tikva, that's how I'm saying it, we would spell it T-I-Q-V-A-H, so tikva. And uh, it means hope, but the root, I always like to look at what's the root word, you know, is there some secret meaning here? And it's interesting, the root of tikva means, uh, speaks of a chord or a line, uh, like a twisted chord. And what that spoke to my heart was that our hope, whatever it's in, even if it's the Giants or the Mets or anything like that, hope connects us, ties us like a cord to the future. Imagine a cord tied around your waist and connected to some point out over the horizon that might be tomorrow, the day after, the weekend, at some point in the future. And that hope is a cord that is attached into the future. By definition, a hope is future. So hope attaches us to the future, and it's as though the future itself is reeling us in. We, we are drawn toward the thing we hope for by this cord that is wrapped around our waist. And so if we're hoping for the Giants to win this weekend or for the Mets or the Yankees, whoever it is we're hoping for, we are drawn by the cord of that hope to the next event. And if it's our sports team, they either win or they lose. Our hope is satisfied or disappointed. But even if our hope is satisfied, guess what happens? We hope again. We thirst again because what's going to happen next week? And there's a new cord tied around our waist, and that new cord is connected to the future, and we are reeled into the next game or the next event or the next picnic, whatever it is. And so when Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well, and he's saying to her indirectly, he's saying to her, if you knew who you were talking to, well, actually, he does say that. If you knew who it was you were talking to, you'd be asking me for a drink because if you drink from the water I have to offer, you will not thirst again. Imagine as followers of Christ, when we drink of the water of life that he has to offer, that that cord of hope is wrapped around our waist. But the point that it connects to isn't next weekend. Uh, it isn't tomorrow night. The cord of hope that is tied around our waist links to eternity, links to the kingdom of heaven, links to the very throne of God through Jesus Christ, who is the vine and we are the branches. And that future hope that we have placed in Jesus is reeling us in. We're being reeled into the future by this cord of hope that's tied around our waist. And perhaps the closer we get, but perhaps the tighter the cord is around our waist, that sense of purpose, that sense of fulfillment, that sense of uh, have our life having a meaning is never squandered. Our thirst is satisfied over and over and over again as we are drawn by the cord of hope into the future of eternal life through Jesus Christ. If we drink of the water of life, we shall never thirst again. Amen? Amen.